very interested in finding uh, a nice straight line towards the next station. The last station is half a mile behind us, the next one's three and a half miles ahead, and luckily the ice is opening right out, so from here on we should be able to go straight towards the next station. Um, but if it was busier, so if we were going down this way, then I'd just be concentrating really hard on looking for the easiest route to go between the ice. And if there's no choice um, but to break some, then uh, minimum speed, say about three knots, and looking for these nice flat bits, particularly the ones with pools on, they're generally very well melted and soft. We'll go through them like butter. Um, the chaps that have got ridges or hummocks along them tend to be, uh, they'll certainly be a harder target because if you understand about um, the sort of six or seven to one ratio. So if there's a hump like that on top, then there's a huge great keel underneath. Um, so that's going to take a lot more braking. So basically, we're looking for the path of least resistance. We're trying to get there quickly without in any way risking damage to the ship. If we are in a pickle with the ice, one of the ways of, of getting free can be to rock the ship. And um, even with all the pies and cakes, we haven't got enough fat boys on board to run back and forth and rock the ship. So what we can do is um, use a huge reservoir of compressed air to blow the water one way and then the other, and that will just set the ship rocking. And the idea is that that just breaks the ice's hold around the hull and gives you a chance to get moving. I haven't uh, been allowed to play with it yet, sadly, but I'm hopeful. So I'm just doing quite a lot of alterations, of course, here, because we're going fast now. There are still some lumps in this open water, so I'm being very careful to stay away from them. We're now doing 11 knots, and I don't want to even graze along a piece of ice. So I don't want to hit a big hard piece of ice like this one on our starboard bow now. Um, at this sort of speed, 11 knots, that's, that's not what the ship's for. And a, a lot of what's coming down here now uh, is multi-year ice from the top of Greenland and up on the pole itself. So if we're getting bergs, I think we just lost one. There's just one still in sight over there. Nice big berg. That's come a long way to be here. and we really need to stay right away from those. So it is, it's not completely straightforward. They all look the same on the radar. So that's why last night and this morning when it was foggy, we were really just creeping along. The ship is rated to take a metre of uh, first year ice. But um, in practice, there's degrees of everything. So old ice that's really rotted we might do considerably better than that. Um, Multi-year ice that's several times harder than first-year ice, who can say? Not very much at all. And it's very deceptive um, because the ice knocks the swell down, so you don't really get the sort of um, the same weather that we're used to as regular sailors. The seas tend to be very flat, even if it's quite windy. Big swells disappear down to nothing. You get into a real um, false sense that the weather's nice. Absolutely obsessed with the ice pictures and the weather forecast, and we never let one go by without having a good, good hard look at it, and thinking constantly about whether we're in a safe place, whether it's a sensible place to be. It is absolutely splendid fun, yeah, and um, the Queen pays for all the diesel, so it's even better. <laughs>